Tonight our special guest is that guy and the man from Hellas, just two of the faces in the branding of comedian Lee Hart. Lee joins us tonight to tell us all about the brand new website watchme.co.nz. Lee Hart, welcome wow, to the Big Brothers On. Whoa. This is an honor. This is great. To have the famous, world famous <laughs> Lee Hart in our studio. Yes, well. Thank you for coming in today, No, Lee. thanks for having me. It's, it's fantastic. Very comfortable here, isn't it? And, oh, it's very nice, very nice. So especially for you today, Lee, especially for you. Um, normally, it, we, have, um, normally we have apple boxes. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I've seen the show before, and I always wondered where it was done from. So this is a... <laughs> Now, Lee, uh, we got hold of the CIA, and uh, this is all we could find about Lee Hart. It's my dossier, isn't it? That's the CIA. They said very little is known about this man. So, Jared, do your best. Okay. Extract some information. First of all, uh, born in 1970, so of course you're not a baby boomer, but we're going to make you an honorary baby boomer. Fact. Yeah, that's a real honour today. Born in 1970. 1970, nice round number. It's, it's yeah. great, actually. You can remember how old I am at any one time. It's nice and easy. I was great to be born in 1970. It's good, isn't it? So I'm not obviously quite in the 60s, mm. which is, is good. And um, I'm not, yeah, I don't know if that's a good age. Yeah. What do you remember, or what do you know about us baby boomers? Are we getting in your way? Uh, we should be all retiring and uh, letting you young guys take over? Is that no, not at all. Be? I think it's, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm in the middle there, and I'm thinking uh, it's not enough of it. I yeah. think it's gone too far with the, with the, the young people. I'm starting to feel out of touch. <laughs> They're touch catching now. up on you Yeah, too. <laughs> you know, it's uh, the technology. and uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> no, you had a great decade. And look, you've spent the first 10 years of life uh, over, living overseas with your parents, So, which yeah. means it took the Kiwi out of you to a certain degree. Well, it was weird because I, I, I probably didn't have a chance to even become a Kiwi. I, I was born on the west coast of the, you know, yeah, just in a grand earth, yeah. yeah. And if my father was a coal miner. And my, he, my dad? Well, yeah. no, no, dad was a mine surveyor, but he knew all yeah. your mates, your yeah. father's mates, I well, Definitely, it's a small, yeah. small world over there. And they, um, and they But he wanted to continue... That. He went into tunnelling as opposed to mining, and a lot of that work was overseas. Yeah. So I think we moved to Hong Kong in about 72. Um, so I, was, you know, I started kindergarten and stuff in Hong Kong, then moved to Australia briefly, and then to Peru. Wow. For the, my formative early years, so from about sort of six to eleven or twelve, whatever, I was living in in Peru, high in the Andes, high in Mount Cook. Then, of course, you took, you uh, also did it yourself. You were working on the English Channel. Yeah, well, that wow. would have come about, of course, with my father being a tunneler. He ended up working in, in over there, and I was at university by the stage. I'd left Christchurch and and, and Canterbury for a year, but to be honest, I was. <laughs> yeah. Probably messing around a bit, you know. And he, he sort of suggested, he sort of thought, why don't you come over here and I'll get you into the, the family business, I suppose. And so I ended up working, not with him, luckily, he was miles away. He was one of the top guys on a different part of the job. Yeah. So I, yeah, well, it was a full on experience that. So working on the channel tunnel with my brother. And that was the. Great experience, I could Great experience. I was never really cut out for it. I was mm. dreamy and thinking about other things, music, bands. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to get into bands then as well, of course. But the thing about I remember the most was the sense of humour of the people I was working with. Yeah. The Irish, Welsh, um, Scottish, you know, Northern England miners, yeah. um, all these kind of people on the job. And it was, it's, that was, I was 19, 20, yeah. probably the youngest guy on the job, one of them. And to be working with these sort of guys, which I suppose my father would have been working with all his life, these yeah. type of characters and their, their razor wit and yeah. stuff, it was, that certainly rubbed off of me, I think. He talked about being dreamy. That that is so much of a young person's thing. You had images in your mind of being in a band, being mm. being in the entertainment industry, and so yeah. working in the tunnel. You know, it's hot and sweaty, and you're doing things, and yet the entertainment industry seems so far away. Yes, no, exactly right. Because the uh, music was my first love. I wanted to yeah. get into music well before sort of TV, and we we had bands for quite uh, most of the nineties after that. I was playing in bands. But that's where I was thinking about it. So you're walking down the tunnel often by yourself, you've missed the train in or something, and it's a great place for thinking. Yeah. Careful, of course, because it can be quite dangerous. Yeah. But I, as I say, my brother was fairly practical, so was my father, and I was, I'm sort of that black chief in the sense that I'm, if someone's going to stuff something up, it'd probably be me. You know, <laughs> he, Dad always get my brother yeah, to do the, yeah, yeah. the jobs. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, so I spent a lot of time while I was doing that thinking, oh, this is great, and it was quite well paid, but thinking... Um, I don't really want to be doing this. I want to be doing something. Were you a singer or a guitarist? Yeah, or? I was both, actually. Yeah. I started off on drums. My father was a drummer in a band in the 60s on the coast um, called the Tremors, which were pretty big back yeah. then, by all accounts. And so that got me into drums when I was young. But like a lot of drummers, I thought, oh, I 
I can't, I need a guitar. That's really, everyone's into it. So I got into guitar. My brother was also playing guitar. I started singing through necessity. <laughs> then our bass player left. Mm -hmm. And to my credit, I suppose, I was probably the most flexible. I ended up playing bass mm -hmm. and singing. Because you've done Which you've wasn't done. ideal because it's got that kind of, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, the rest of the 90s after the tunnel job was spent back in New Zealand playing in a band. Then we went back to Europe to Traveller's Band, mm. which, was, which was a good laugh. So. Now, funny enough, you've ended up in comedy. You've ended up yeah. being one of the funniest guys in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, oh, so you you have me in hysterics with your videos. And, uh, and of course, yeah. you're best known for the Hello Sausages and the Hello Bacon, aren't Yeah, you? well, it's all sort of related, isn't it? It all overlaps, and you can't, I can't really see where one started, one finished. Like yeah. the, for the comedy side of it, for example, I think that probably started back in the band. Mm. And uh, as you know, talking to all these guys, as they started out, you know, Shane and the like, you know, the, some of the gigs that would have been done was horrendous. There's no one there and you're trying to, well, he, he might be an exception, you know, but you know, there's no one there in the pub and people are putting the jukebox on while you're playing and this yeah. sort of stuff. And you just end up going into amusing yourselves with yeah. sort of comedy routines. So a lot of that stuff transferred into later on when I decided to get into TV, I suppose. But yeah. No, know. I've tried to analyse your wonderful humour and it's sort of like uh, you're an ordinary guy going through life but there's all this madness happening around you mm. and it's your face you reflects you know it's like you give a sideway glance you look yeah. sideways at things and uh and it's a weird one yeah i'm not sure if it's a conscious thing it's or like you're reacting to everything how how mad the world is yeah I'm, I'm wondering now because you can overanalyze things now when you look back on stuff yeah. content because you probably start monkeying yourself in a way yeah. so uh, looking back now whether i had that view or approach on things or whether I put it on and now that I it's become a thing now I obviously mimic myself as well I don't know but I suppose I've always had a drier sense of humor than you know it's you know, really dry it's, it's yeah which is also a west coast thing wonderful. I think yeah, yeah, that's, yeah it can be a bit like that and again the, the guys over in UK that's mm. a UK kind of humor that, that, that the tunnel guys and stuff that as opposed to I've never been a simplest way of putting it, I've never really been into punchlines mm. or, you know, that no, kind yeah. of stuff yeah. or, you know, more the, the typical stand-up kind of stuff is, and I take my hat off to those guys that do that, but it's more often more punchline yeah. orientated. You've surrounded yourself with a great bunch of guys. They're yeah. all funny. Jason Hoyt, for instance. Yeah, yeah uh, totally. We've got uh, Jeremy Wells, yep. Matt Heath. Yep. Uh, you know... And and Like-minded people, yeah. you know, and we all had our different... We all had our different things going on as little as five years ago. And all of a sudden, it all seemed to have intersected at the same time, and you realise that we always knew each other, and but we never really did anything with each other. And it's, it seems obvious now, but that's I think that's how things work out, you know. Now the concept that you've got in this uh, late night uh, big breakfast um, mm. is that you'll talk to somebody they they're, they're about to be interviewed, and they come all expecting to be interviewed, but you keep cutting them off all the time. Uh, what, so yeah, where did that that idea of a again? That, well, I think we probably did it a couple of times, yeah. and that was the, the joke. But yeah. it, I think it really is. We were talking about TV off air earlier. Everything I do really in that world mm. is a parody, not so much of the people or it's of the TV genre. Mm. So it's if it's a talk show, I'll be trying to make the worst possible talk show that's ever happened for, <laughs> in a believable manner, in yeah. the sense that um, things can go wrong physically, of course, mm. can collapse, um, the guest is... is treated in a poor way but the jokes hopefully always back on us that I mean how incompetent could these guys be you know that it's almost like you give someone an order cue no matter what you know that old gag they'll just read it you know, you know no matter what because TV has to continue and that's the kind of approach we're sort of taking so hopefully it's yeah. and then you branch into things like doing alternative commentaries I mean yeah. that's been so successful well, that's one of the things I think yeah. that brought us all those other guys together um, you know was, was the cricket. A lot of the other guys are probably more into cricket than I am. I, I like it, but they were quite good and they were in, into They're that. devotees. So, yeah, yeah. So, but it's been great because we've all come on and added our different things and that, in a way, has brought us all together in, in the sense of the radio now mm. with the radio hierarchy and stuff and then there's, of course, um, this NZ Me platform thing. So, yeah, it, it's been great. And, and, of course, with Sports Cat, for how I first got really into TV, that was all sport, sport-based humour anyway, sports mm. stories, which I'd try to twist off into something that wasn't sport. But, uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's all crosses over. Oh, sure. it's great. Well, well, it's all come together now, of course, uh, Lee, because I read it in the Herald, and that's the reason you're sitting in this very seat tonight, that you've got a brand-new 
um, website called watchme.co.co.nz. Mm. So, of course, I immediately went on and watched it, and I said, I've got to get Lee in and have a chat to him. Oh, great. Well, thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a great website. So how did that yeah. all come about? Well, again, I think it's the, you know, the, the nature of the changing world of you know, the word platforms all the time yeah. and stuff now. But I think really... Uh, NZ me, I think, just wanted to recognise the fact that people were watching a lot more content online now. Yeah. So why not harness that and make it uniquely Kiwi mm. content as opposed to everything from overseas? Because you're still going to get that, of course, yeah. on the Herald pages and all the other websites. Um, so getting something like that, which is, I think, that the idea is to recognise maybe sort of younger talent as well coming through. Um, not not me, the young. I'm, I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> You're still um, a young man. <laughs> bringing, bringing other people in and just trying to get some sort of unique TV shows there that perhaps can't breathe in, in other other areas on TV perhaps now. Because I think the the real thing is I think TV now because of the commercial realities, are having to get so much more, uh, you know, specific about what they want mm-hmm. and they can't really take as many risks, you know, to, so in their defence, I suppose. So. I think it hopefully should be a win-win and uh, a way of getting more content out there. And of course, uh, look, if you're giving any advice to anyone that wants to get into the entertainment industry, tell them that that's the hairstyle they need. Uh, yes, that's obviously that's, that's the, the way to go. You stand yeah. out, of course, yeah. uh, which can be good and bad, but it, it's, it's streamlined, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and nowadays, I think you know, operations seem to be streamlined yeah. and brought back, paired back a bit for you know budget and costs. You still need to make the content, but you know, hair like this, it, it reminds you, you know. Yeah. So, now today, of course, you've got Moon TV. That's your production company, yep. of course, and um, you're into all sorts of uh, video uh, doing... Uh, yeah, well, everything I've ever filmed, generally, uh, 95% of it, has all come through my own production mm. production company called Moon TV, which is, I suppose, I set up when I started the TV show, Moon mm. TV, and it, it carried on. So, yeah, so we're often filming ads and corporate things for people, stuff that even that I'm not in, you know, yeah. that I'm just producing it. Um, often I am in a lot of it, but um, even things like the Hellers ads and things like that now are actually making. So it's good to be able to see both, yeah. do both sides, not just be on the screen, but actually yeah. to make it. As you know, it's it's good to, you know, to make the most of all those sort of opportunities. I suppose. Well, you've de- you've developed three great characters in the sense that uh, there's Lee Hart, for instance. Mm-hmm. People know, and then they know that guy. Yep. And then they know the Hellas guy. So, yeah, uh, oh, totally. And yeah. you did right. And yeah. travelling around the country, <laughs> depends where you are, you can yeah. almost predict what someone's going to say. Yeah. Like, you know, you can go to an airport sort of thing, and the security and the domestic airport, and the, some guy will go uh, invariably, oh, got any sausages in there, mate? Or, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, it's the first time I've heard that. No, not today, this will be. But then, of course, if I'm sort of maybe at a university or Christchurch, the Needham or something, Students tend to be very much that guy, or, or, or Lee Hart, I suppose, yeah. or even more specifically some of the characters, I suppose, which are, which is good. And then other times, obviously, they don't know who the hell you are. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's good as well. <laughs> so it's all, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> well, we've got to finish now. We've run out of time, but I've discovered. Due to the hairstyle, you could be the new host of The Big Goes On oh. in a couple of years' time. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Watch the space. We can fit the image. <laughs> well, we can just sub in for each other. You know, <laughs> yeah. can... In 20 years' time, they'll say, is that Jared Smith still doing <laughs> that show? But it'd have to be Lee Hart. <laughs> yeah. So, um, they'll be going, he used to look a lot better than he does now. You yeah. know. <laughs> so what we want you to do before you go is um, we have at the end of our show uh, Shane Hales, and uh, we've got a little joke at the end every week, um, it started a long time ago as these the sterling, sterling job old sausage. So if you could look at the camera there and we'll pass it on to Shane and you say, sterling job old Heller's sausage. <laughs> yeah, sure. Shane, sterling job old Heller's sausage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pass that on. That'll be on the show. Thanks, mate. Yes. Thanks. Thanks.